stood on the church steps of his little Ohio hometown. As his mother stopped to greet the preacher, that old gray-haired preacher bent down. And he looked that little boy right square in the eye with a love that was easy to see. He said, boy, when you grow up, tell me, what do you want to be? Well, I want to be a man of God like you, sir. I want to walk in the steps of the man from Galilee. I want to bring God's love to this whole world. I want to give Him the glory by teaching His Word. I want to be a man of God like you. Well, as the boy grew up, he learned to work on the farm. And at school it was basketball. He could have taken his pick of any job in the world and been the best of the best at them all. But when his choice was made, this boy's dream came true. He remembered the words he'd said. He could have been a superstar or a millionaire, but he answered God's call instead. Well, he gave all he had, and he listened to God. He took the hard times with the good. He taught the people of the power of God For over 43 years he stood And now there are some who have sat at his feet As he's faithfully showed us the way We are the way core Now you can hear us say well, I want to be a man of God like you, sir I want to walk in the steps of the man from Galilee I want to bring God's love to this whole world I want to give Him the glory by teaching His Word I want to be a man of God like you I want to be a man of God like you well, I want to be a man of God like you. And then another sonship right is the ministry of reconciliation in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17 I want to start with. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The text reads, he's a new creation. Why? Because you got Christ in you, the hope of glory. You never had that before you got born again. Old things are passed away. The old nature is gone because you've got a new nature of Christ born within you. Behold, all things are become what? And all things new are of whom? God, who hath, past tense, reconciled, past tense, us to himself, by whom? Jesus Christ. Then he reconciled us. Now he hath given to us the ministry of what? To wit, namely, verse 19, God was where? In Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses or sins unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of what? He's given us the ministry of reconciliation in verse 18, and then he's given us the word to do it with in verse 19. Verse 20, now, now, now means what? Now. Not when you die, but right now. Now then, we're ambassadors for whom? As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's said, be you reconciled to God. We're ambassadors for whom? Christ. 
then why don't we act it? The average Christian you meet always looks emaciated and defeated. And he's usually negative, like I demonstrated to you the other night. You go to the corner bar, the boys have a different kind of spirit, but when they come out of there, they maybe don't have a dime in their pocket, but they walk a lot around like they can beat the whole world, right? But boy, when the Word of God says you're an ambassador for Christ, what do the ordinarily look like? All you have to do some Sunday morning is take your camera, go to the church, and when the people come out, shoot the pictures and then study their faces when they come out. Because it's like I told you, most of them look like a Holstein cow that hasn't been milked for five days. <laughs> Long-faced and mopey, you know. Instead of coming out of the church bouncy, I can whip the world. No, they come out all shrugged up. We're ambassadors. Now, I'm an ambassador, and I'm going wild. So I'm going to show you how I feel as an ambassador, okay? Got to go get my props. This briefcase. I go get the best, brief, best suitcase I can find. I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Now, I can't be haughty or proud for fear that he'll strike me dead if I do that. So I find the oldest suitcase I can find. And since they're going to send me down south where it rains like crazy, I also got to bring my umbrella. So I got to have an umbrella. And this is... I'm an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then I got to bear all of the sins of all the people, you know. Ain't I a, just a great representative? Don't you want to go to Twig with me? <laughs> no, you don't, do you? I wouldn't want to go with me either. Well, anyways, that's the way the average Christian is. Well, bless your old hearts. I just had a phone call this afternoon from President Reagan. He wants me to be an ambassador to Great Britain. Now, you got to excuse me a minute. i got to go buy something because I'm going to be an ambassador for a country in which all men are liars... So you just got to excuse me till I go shopping, okay? I'll be back. Don't go home, okay? I'll go through here, this shortcut. I got to go shopping in Gunnison. Ready? Okay. I got it. <laughs> I'm an ambassador to Great Britain. I just bought the most expensive suitcase they had available. In addition, it rains all the time in Great Britain, so I had to get me an umbrella, and it is a dandy. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Isn't that a dandy? Let her rain in Great Britain. I'm an ambassador for the United States of America to Great Britain. And of course, when you go to Great Britain, you're allowed to smoke cigars. He's got the lighter to do it. Thank you, sir. Bought the best suitcase money can buy, the best umbrella, and even have a top hat to go as an ambassador of the United States to Great Britain.
God says, now then we're ambassadors for Christ. To be an ambassador for Christ, I got the poorest stuff money can have. Somebody's got their values wrong. Had Reagan called me today and told me I was ambassador to Great Britain, all of you people in this class that blow your buttons and you women to lose your bras, whether they open in front wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> you see, I'm up on those things. <laughs> you have to be if you're going to teach a class on power for a bunch of living. And you people be so proud, you'd all go home and say, Well, Dr. Wuerl's an ambassador to Great Britain. The Word of God says that I'm an ambassador for God, for Jesus Christ, and nobody gets excited about it. You see, we certainly got our values screwed up a little bit. And so the Christians have been the poorest representatives of Christ the world's got. If you're a son of God, you said you were redeemed, you were justified, you're made righteous, you're sanctified, you're set apart. Well, why don't you stand up and breathe, throw your shoulders back, and walk down the street and say, Get out of the way, here comes the son of God. But no, we walk along, you know, like we're poverty stricken and all bent over with all the sins of everybody else. No wonder nobody wants to follow the revelation of the word because you're the epitomization of stupidity and defeat. While a man going to Great Britain will get the best clothes money can buy, get the best everything else. Why? Because he represents the United States of America. He does not speak his opinion. He speaks what he's told to speak for the government. You and I are ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. We speak what the Word says, what God says. Not what you think or your tradition. You say what the Word says.